I remember when we got the call after I sent the audition in, me and her were like, oh my God, I can't believe this is or something. And we were like, oh my gosh. And it was a call me, she was like, you've worked so hard, Zeta. I was like, it's been so long, I did. My mom is human. And I thought I was too until I had no chill. What's wrong with you anyway? Are you done here? Because I'll totally eat the rest. Bellos needs Titan blood to make a new portal key. That was a seriously underwhelming performance. I was expecting a lot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Zeno Robinson! Ooh. Yay! I finally made it. You made it, yes. <laughs> yeah. We were going to be here last week, but yeah. we are, you had a signing. I did. I, I was, it was the, the last Saturday. Mm -hmm. I was at OG Collectibles, I think. Oh, yeah, was, is that in Los Angeles? It's, well, it, yes, technically, but it's uh, in Downey. It's oh, in Downey. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, some One Piece people yeah. were over there too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we did a Demon Slayer, we did a Demon Slayer right. signing, which is cool. Like uh, Genya's Funko Pop had just come out, and so they wanted to do like a a, a Genya, like a Demon Slayer specific signing. Well, I mean, it was like the wave though. It was like Griffin Burns' character, which rose out too. He just came out with the Funko and uh, oh, or uh, nice. Brick Chalmers, you know, Uroko uh, Uroko Daki, um, you know, and then a bunch of other. Say yeah, was yeah. it fun? It was fun. I, the OG collectibles guys are cool too. I, they they have all these like vintage games, and I'm like in, very into like games. What, uh, what's considered vintage nowadays? They have like like old school like Game Boys, you know, like Game Boy uh, colors, like uh -huh. uh, um, you know, the, and like in different colors and different makes and models and the Super Nintendo. Um, and I usually go because they always have like really really rare like PlayStation or GameCube games, yeah. like you know, um, that are like man, this game was like. Forty dollars back when it came out, and now it's two hundred seventy dollars. Is it whoa? Yeah, because of like how the you Limit. know Limited yeah inventory how, exactly, and or how popular the game was back when it was when it was when it was released, or how good the game was. So the game was really good and really niche, and it, you know maybe it didn't sell well then, but now it's a very coveted game because how good it was, um, or if it sold incredibly well, but like people don't turn them in because of how good the game was or whatever what have you it, it increases the value of the so game. but how many of those games still play i mean because i had the old nintendo and mm -hmm. you know yeah you'd blow into right. it forever <laughs> and like for some reason that would work yeah. i don't know why some, sometimes it does sometimes it still plays and sometimes like the, the they have you have to they have to fix the hardware like if you want to buy a new like ds or a new like game boy sp sometimes the game can be old and cut and uh, along with the console, um, like the pixelization might be off. The pixelation yeah. might be off. Um, so like some people have to like kind of fix the hardware mm. in order to like make it so that it, it runs the game. It's a but, whole yeah. underground subculture. Oh yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. it's it's so fascinating. Like you can get, and I always use this as an example just because I love this game. But like Earthbound is like three hundred and like the highest I saw was like three seventy, three seventy five. Three hundred seventy-five dollars. Dollars. Yeah, three hundred and seventy-five dollars for a Nintendo six. No, a Super Nintendo cartridge. Oh, Super Nintendo. Uh, yeah, Super Nintendo cartridge of Earthbound, and that's outside the box, and that's outside the um like the bundle that it came in when it came out. So oh. Nintendo only released a thousand of them. Wow. Yeah, only a thousand of um the like Earthbound Super Nintendo bundle. Um, with the strategy guide. Do you have it? And I have one. <gasps> wow. At home. I do. Do you play it or do you just keep it in a glass curio cabinet? I didn't know how valuable it was when I discovered it. Um, uh -huh. I... I, actually, it was funny because I was... I, I'm kicking myself because I, I... Back, back, back in the day, I was looking for games to sell uh, on eBay because I just had so many as a kid. And I was like, Mom, I want to sell some of these games. And my mom was like, yeah, let's sell some of your games. Um, <laughs> yes, we, the both of us being idiots. You know? <laughs> the both of us. Uh, and... I had discovered this Earthbound thing, and I said, oh, this is that game that Ness comes from, from Super Smash Brothers. I was like, I didn't know he had his own game and that it already had come out. And so I had like kind of stumbled upon this like, this bundle that I had mm. that I didn't know at the time was like incredibly rare until I started going into cons and seeing the price. I was like, why is this game so freaking expensive? And apparently it was because like they only made a limited amount. Mm. And released it in in North America. Mm. Pretty crazy. Rarity. Yeah. We'll drive up the cost. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, did you? Where'd you grow up? Carson. I grew up out here. Ah, uh, I lived I in. It. I grew up in Carson. So I've lived in Carson for most of my life. Mm -hmm. 
like until like a few years ago. Is your mom still there? Mm-hmm. My mom's still there. Okay, yeah, my mom's still there. And yeah, I lived there with my mom and my sister for like all, um, almost all my life. You just have the one sibling? I have two. I have, two. I have my sister. Um, I have a younger sister and I have an older sister. Now you kind of started acting at a young age, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All about kids. Mm-hmm. Is that like kids yeah. incorporated? <laughs> kind of, kind of. It was like um, it was run by this woman named Felicia Scott. I don't know if she still does it, but hmm. um, it was run by this woman named Felicia Scott, and she was like, she had this pro. It was in it was in LA. It was like off Wilshire, um, and. Uh, she would just. It, my mom heard the advertisement on the radio. Oh. Um, and she was just kind of famous for like you know taking all these kids and um and like you know bringing them in and training them and getting these agents to come and look at all these kids who could potentially be future stars and um yeah and 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 you know a lot of those kids would get signed and end up in movies or end up in TV shows um. And yeah, so like that's where I started. It was in this church um, in LA mm-hmm. and yeah, and, and it was like a 10 week program. There was like, a, there was like a, a, a starting program, right? Like we'll teach you how to do this, we'll teach you how to do this. And then there was like an I want an agent program, which was mm-hmm. like the, and I remember looking at my mom like, <gasps> like please. <laughs> yeah, and she was like, she saw the price went, ouch. Uh-huh. Uh, um, but she, she, you know, asked for some help for some neighbors. I don't know if my dad contributed at all, but um, she, she, she asked around and pulled the money together and put me through the program. And um, so it was like ten weeks of of like training and singing and acting and dancing with a bunch of different coaches and instructors. And How old were you at the time? I was probably like thirteen. Okay, yeah, probably... and you knew you were like, I like acting. And then when yeah, I at that point, I had already. And it, it kind of happened really fast. Like the mm-hmm. like I discovered that I liked acting like maybe like the year before or maybe even that year. Um, but I think kind of the year before um, when, you know, in middle school we had a we had this mandatory like assembly we had to go to. And the, these kids came running through the aisles and I was in. Like you had to pick an elective, like mm-hmm. as a as a kid, and so like my elective was like art, right? So like you know I'm I'm a big nerd, so like anime, you know. So I was trying to learn. I was like, how do I make anime? You know. So that's what I was doing as a kid, like drawing <laughs> Gohan really terribly, right? There's wow. this other kid in my class, and he was his name was Alan, I think. He was great. I was so jealous. He could draw so well, <laughs> and I was like, maybe I'm just not cut out for this. You um, need to reconnect with Alan. Yeah, I know. See, see what Alan he's doing. What is, what is he doing? Maybe he's in Japan. Yeah, like, <laughs> like as an animator. <laughs> I saw all these kids running through the hall. And this, this this girl came up on stage, and she was in this costume, she was in this mask, and she was talking, and I could hear her voice throughout the entire mm. auditorium, and she was doing this monologue, and they were doing a play of the Lorax, and I was like, what is that? I want to do that. Immediately after, I walked up to the uh, the drama teacher, Mr. Lisker's mm-hmm. name, and I was like, how do I be in your thing? How do I be, how do I do what they just did? Um, and... He was like, oh, it's the elective drama, blah, blah, blah. So I asked my counselor, I said, I said, can you tell them that I want to be in the thing, um, in, in drama? And the counselor said that it had been like too late in mm. the year, in the semester for me to switch. But the next semester I could switch over and then I switched over. Um, and then, you know, one thing led to another. Then the agent program. Um, I wrote this monologue because um, I was like a big writer, like, mm-hmm. like uh, uh, as a kid. Um, I was always writing and like, I wrote this monologue. Um, and one of the coaches like sort of coached me through it, and then I, I did this monologue. Um, it, was, it was about gang violence. I, I didn't know anything about gang violence. <laughs> uh, uh, it, I mean, I knew a little bit about gang violence, but like it was about gang violence. Uh, it was like how about, it was and like you were like in the sixth grade. Yeah, I was like thirteen, and I was writing about how my best friend got shot. Like, oh, uh, yeah, that's powerful. It was, yeah, it was, it was pretty, yeah, I was writing. I wrote this monologue about how my best friend got shot <laughs> in a drive-by shooting. Uh, wow. um, after that. I think like a couple agents sort of like were like fielding me like they they were interested and Hmm. one of them ended up being Melissa over at CESD Mm -hmm. who ended up being the one who we the agent yeah really yeah yeah Yeah, she's great she's Mm -hmm. she's great and it's it's kind of it's it's crazy seeing like like I'm in Transformers Earthspark and like Zion who uh, plays um, who plays Dot no not she does like whoa I'm tripping Zion. Who plays um, Mo mm-hmm. in the show is also Melissa's 
Yeah. You know, so it's kind of crazy, like how generational generational it is now. Like I, I started with Melissa, and then I, when I, I moved to the adults, and me, so, so someone Melissa discovered, and one of Melissa's current agents are both in the same show, like as siblings. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah, like that's so like Melissa was the sort of the one who like it was between her and this other agent who I can't remember. I don't remember her at all. Gosh. I don't remember her name the right choice. or the agency. <laughs> but it's funny enough, that was, I wanted to go with the other lady. I was like, that lady's nice and she seemed to like me. But my mom was like, no, let's go with CESD. Like they, they seem to be, have a little bit more of a, of a bigger, you know, a, a bit more like, uh, um, like wow. prestige. Yep. You know, they seem to be like one of the top agents. Mm -hmm. Like they, and she seems to see something in you. Like, let's go with her. So I went with them. Um, and yeah. It, it, the rest is history. Like the rest is history. The rest is Cheers. freaking history. Yeah. So even before you started getting into acting, you were already an anime fan, huh? Yeah. I think that's so amazing how thank much you. that shows in your work, your passion, and your love. Oh, thank you for it. Yeah. Um, what were some of your favorite shows growing up? I was, you know, Dragon Ball Dragon Z. Ball. You know, <laughs> uh, Pokemon. I was a big Sailor Moon fan ah, as a kid. Uh -huh. um, Sonic, like Sonic Toei. I didn't know anime was anime until like we didn't have cable for a while, so. When we got we got cable because I had booked Ben Ten, mm. that was the reason why we got cable because we wanted to watch it when mm -hmm. it when it came out on TV on Cartoon Network. But then with getting Cartoon Network came, and then Toonami. you ended up spending your entire paycheck from the show, right? <laughs> get, to get cable, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> from there, uh, we when we got Cartoon Network, then came Toonami, and then int mm. that introduced me like to like Naruto and like that block of like anime and like Adult Swim. So then that's when I started getting introduced to like Full Metal Alchemist and, um, you know, Cowboy Bebop and, you know, Dead Man Wonderland. Like a lot of the shows that were like foundational when I was like, like coming up and like watching shows and like as an actor being like, wow, I wanna, I wanna make someone feel whatever this show is making me feel, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was great. All great the time. feels. The feels, <laughs> all yeah, the all feels. the feels. So then you you started doing, you, you had booked Ben 10, you're mm -hmm. making your way through high school. Mm -hmm. How did you get your first anime gig? What was your first anime gig? My first anime gig was, I was Incidentals in All Noah Zero, season two. Was that something you sought out? Or Kinda. something that was like presented to you from? Your agency? It was mostly something that I had sought out. Mm -hmm. um, like, CSD wasn't really dealing with anime, mm -hmm. like, at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, and I had wanted to get into it, and everybody sort of kind of knew I liked it. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, you know, like, the people around me were like, oh, I don't know how, like, how your agents will feel about it. And I was kind of like, I didn't, I didn't really kind of care, <laughs> like, at the time. I just knew that it was... I am who I am. Yeah, and it's, like, something that I wanted to do. And especially, it was taking place during a time where I just, I was not working. Mm -hmm. um, like, you know, Ben 10, in between Ben 10 and the next thing I booked had been, like, seven years. Like, between that and, like, Big City Greens, there was, just like, this big, big period mm -hmm. of, like, me mm -hmm. not working. And just, like, do, taking classes and going to school mm -hmm. and, like, living my life. College or high school? Both. Both. Uh, okay. both. Uh, I was, you know... I, I did high school and then I was in college still kind of trying to find my way and find my footing. Where'd you go to college, by the way? I went to Santa Monica College. Okay, so yeah. still in LA. Yeah, still, still in, in LA. LA. You're still committed LA. to the acting. Yeah. Did you study it when you're... Uh, I did study acting when I was in college. That was the main reason why I went. I was like, I'm gonna if I'm going to go, like I'm going to go and like study theater and, you know, maybe I'll try to transfer to like UCLA or something. But like I had all, I had started feeling like I was missing out on acting opportunities because I was still in school. Um, I was like, mm, like I can't go on X Y Z audition because I have class. Yeah, you know, I can't go on this audition because I have class. Mm -hmm. And like, that was kind of you know kind of getting irritating for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I would miss it, right? I would have to miss it um, because like my, for me, like my that's more important. But yeah, so Anime Expo um, had you know Bang Zoom did the open auditions at yeah. Anime Expo like twenty. I want to say like fourteen or fifteen, one of those years. But everyone I knew when it was announced, kept tagging me, uh -huh. like, because they knew I was an actor, like all my friends, like all my yeah, high school friends. Yeah, like, Yeah, there was like, oh, they, they go, oh, look, I know you like anime, and you're an actor, they're doing open auditions over there at Anime Expo. And so, it's only a how many hours? <laughs> <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, um, so it was the only reason why I went. I didn't even know what Anime Expo was at yeah. that time. I just knew that it was a place where I could go and audition for anime, because mm -hmm. that's what it says, like, oh, you want to be an anime? Uh, you could come and audition. So I went. And I, it was the first thing I did. I, I looked up when it was, where it was, and I was like the 
third person in line. Well, before, what time did you get there? Probably like. Five in the morning, four five, five in, the in the morning. morning. Set the scene for us. So, so downtown LA was so, it still in downtown LA? At yeah, time? it was still in downtown LA. So Lincoln Convention Center. Uh-huh. Uh, someone I was dating at the time was was going with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the two of you guys. Just the two of us. And I got there, like, I don't know, like it was still dark out. Like that's how early we were. And I, you know, we uh, found parking uh, somewhere nearby, uh, somewhere close, um, and I'll. Uh, we are just waiting for the hall to open. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, it's in this place. Once it opens, we're going straight there. Wait, what time was this at? This had to have been at least five in the morning because mm-hmm. it was still dark. And like we like had had I, I and, and in fact, like we had got up and went straight there. You know, like we got up at like maybe four in the morning to <laughs> get ready to go. And so uh, we went straight there and I said, you know, I think. We just waited for the hall to open because we had yeah. got our badges the day before. You click, you get your badge the day before, uh, and we just waited for the hall to open. And then the only reason why I wasn't like the first person there is because I got lost because I'd never been there before, right? I didn't know where it took place um, or what booth it was at. And I think at that year they were they were doing Magi. They were doing open auditions for Magi, and I really wanted to play this character named Sphintus. Like I didn't really know how how it worked at that mm-hmm. time, uh, but you know I got there. And I was like one of the first people up. And then I didn't hear back after that. And I had assumed that I didn't get a call back. Because uh, I, I think they, they had posted like the people who got called back. So I was like, okay, I, I, I didn't make they it. They post it there at yeah. the event. Mm-hmm. They don't post it at the event. They post like a little bit after. Okay. So I was like waiting around. Mm-hmm. like you know. Um, and I think like, I don't know if you get like a rejection thing or blah, blah, blah. But I knew that I, 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 I didn't go farther than that. And then they had another kind of open audition type thing called Perfect Idol. Um, that was like immediately after AX, where you could just audition for the same, kind of same deal. Like mm-hmm. you can, uh, you know, you audition with like a scene from an anime, um, on like like on, and record yourself like performing, and then like uh, the, you know, three judges would judge you. It was like Mommy, it was like Patrick Seitz, and like Keith Silverstein, and they were the judges, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and they would like all like listen and go over, and then like, and they would get say yay or nay, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so I did Perfect Idol. And I also didn't make it past the what? first. I know I didn't make it. They, yeah, mom but was the only one who said. What a story about yeah. perseverance. I know, I know. <laughs> so I, 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 I didn't make it through the first round of of the first auditions, and I didn't make it through Perfect Idol. And then the next year, I went back to do the open auditions again at Anime Expo. at Anime Expo. And this time, I got a call back. But it took it took a while. I I thought again that I didn't make it through. But then I got a call back, and that was when she brought me in to do these incidentals for All No Zero. Um, and my first like sort of named, well, my first like elevated incidental yeah. was I played this bully in Charlotte, right? Who had like lines, like mm-hmm, actual mm-hmm. like dialogue to to ADR. Um, and then my first first sort of role role like uh was i think super alloy black luster in one punch man what year was that this had to have been like 2016 still 2016. so let's yeah. just take a moment and acknowledge how much has changed in the past six to seven years yeah yeah what? yeah and like Crazy from open auditions. Yeah. I mean, Christina to, B. So many people got their start. Yeah, with those from things. like yeah. Eric Kimmerer and um, um, I don't know if Sean Chiplock got a start that way too, but like Zach Aguilar, like, like so many other people got their start that way. Um, and yeah, like I and like I failed twice. Like I didn't make it through twice, and I was mm-hmm. like, no, I want to do it. I can do this. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Wow. Pretty, pretty crazy. So was <clears> there a particular role that you felt changed the game for you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, like in the two two roles in particular. Mm-hmm. So when I booked Remy in Big City Greens, mm-hmm. that was like, oh, like it was my first recurring animation role. Well, technically not the first. I that... booked Randy Robertson okay. in Disney XD's Spider-Man. And you know me and Melissa, and was, and I remember Melissa called me when I when we got the email because I auditioned for the first round, I auditioned for Miles the first time, and then they had me, they requested me for this other character because I think Chris Zimmerman had just really wanted to use me, like she mm. saw something in me. Who was the casting director for that? And you know I remember when we got the call after I sent the audition in, and you know, me and her were like, oh my god, I can't believe this is because they had wanted all these holds, they had wanted all these like these, they wanted they wanted all these days like booked out, right? Like they want all these holds. Like we want to hold this day, this day, this day. Like every week, 
for the next like six months or something. <laughs> and we were like, oh my gosh. And it was a call me. She was like, you've worked so hard, Zeta. I was like, it's been so long. I did. Cause like I had gone through this whole thing with like with them and like, you know, like it had been years. I've been with them for years and they had like, you know, they went, there was a period of time where like they dropped me. Mm. And then I like, I like took an acting class and Melissa showed up and was like, I wanna like, you know, bring you back. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, and then boom, like the Spider Man thing, and and she was mm. like, I can't like and me and her were like emotional, like in tears, like oh my gosh, and she was like, you worked so hard, and blah blah blah, you know, and we were yeah. just like really really <clears throat> excited. It felt like like all these years of perseverance, and you know that has to that's seven years that has to be at least four thousand auditions, if that right, like it has to be at the you know. That makes me feel great to hear that though, yeah. in a way, not to hear that you had to struggle, but that like it normalizes the yeah. fact that this career, no matter what stage you are in the game, mm -hmm. has downturns, yeah. has struggles, has challenging times, 100%. you know? 100%. Seven years. Seven, and like that's, and like I, you know, I went through high school, I went through yeah. college, is, you know, it's, it's, it's seven, and seven years of like no work. Like it's, it's different if it's like, oh, I did one thing here, and I did one thing there, and I did one thing there, you know? Um, like I, I might do a, like, I might have shot a commercial, like a on camera commercial, yeah. like once or twice, like maybe once a year, but it was seven years of, of like nothing. Yeah. Uh, I'm like callbacks, like I would, I would do callback, I would get closed. That's good. Right, you know, um, but nothing, you know, no, no getting a job. And there's uh, probably like one other dude that was like your type. Yeah, too. that you know, it's <laughs> like it, it, one other guy. Yeah, it's like it's, it's, it's like one of the guy like Kari Payton, right? And it's like one of the guy like Phil Lamar, right? It's like yeah. okay, you could have picked me, but I understand why you picked the professional, yeah. right? Or the guy who you know can get the job done. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it would be yeah, like yeah. me or like one kid who like looked like me, or who was a little bit younger than me, mm. or was a little bit older than me, you know? Or and so it was just that's how it was for a really long time. But you hung in there. But I hung in there, and then we did, and then we booked Spider Man, and then I was only in two episodes of Spider Man. And <laughs> but they had and, you hold your. They had me life. hold all these these holds, and so me and Melissa were kind of a little disappointed that we were really excited about it, and then she was like, "Oh, but like you know, it's more you know, like uh, this is more holds than bookings. Like, what's happening?" Mm -hmm. um, so, but then I by by then I had already moved to the adult department, which is like a whole new like kind of. Feel a whole for me. new a whole world. world, right? It was like I was like I don't know who any of you are, uh, you know. And like, you're big, you yeah. Where, give me back, take me back to Melissa, please. You <laughs> the know? one little room, yeah. <laughs> Safe haven, you can shut the door. Yeah, and so then it was still kind of like more of the okay. Well, keep it on the grind, keep it on the auditions. You know, um, let's like just I'm in Spider Man, but not as much as we would like so uh, it was still it was still cool it was like still very cool like i remember the first day the first session was i was super excited and it was like man and like i was in you know that was when group records still things so like i was in there with like you know robbie damon and like ben diskin and like you know jason spizak and like all these people who were like just professionals and like drew me into the world immediately and i was like wow there's so many things everybody's so good but then like, yeah, books big city greens happened and it was like a recurring, you know, and it, I I knew it was like a heavy featured recurring, and I had to audition like five times. Like I auditioned, and this is a role I had auditioned for years prior too. So when it came back around, I was like, I auditioned for this, um, mm. and then I had to do like so I did that, and I did a callback, and then I had to do two elevated callbacks, right, where I record the whole episode, and then they record the episode, and they take it to the producers. And the producers have to say, okay, this is the guy. But they have to sort of convince the producers that, like, I was the guy for the and role. And maybe they're even chemistry testing you with the other Yeah, with the other actors who are already established, editing. who have already been working on the show for, like, year, for, like, a year okay. at that point now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then I had to do, like, two more, like, test ADR callbacks, right? So then I had to do, like, ADR of the show on, like, two episodes. And, like, they had to send those over to, and, like... Get the approval and blah. So wow. like, it was like really stressful because I was like, please, dear God, please, like, please let me book this. Like, oh my God, yeah. please. And it, it really is amazing. It's a small miracle to book anything ever. Right. You know? it makes yeah. You realize, like... <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's always a small miracle to book anything ever. That's <laughs> that's such a that's such a great way to like look at that because it's so true. But then you know I got the call from my agent Pat, um, who was still at CESD at the time. And um, yeah, and then she like I, I was I was watching Get Out like by myself at the Lamely in NoHo, um, and I was like watching Get Out. It was like the fifth time I watched the movie. I was like, wow, I love this movie. The movie is so good. And I got a call from my agent, and I like, 
and that and she like told me right there like she's like oh yeah they you booked it and I was like oh my god yeah, yeah your heart must you still have call him and you're like <gasps> yeah like, I gotta go <laughs> You know, <laughs> I see this movie. Five it times. was the first showing, yeah. maybe not. But. Right? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, and so then that was what kind mm. of I think changed my life. In a did it change how you felt about yourself? Did it kind of validate your acting choices, or do you think? I think it 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 validated the perseverance that it took. Mm. It let me know. It let me know that it was something that I could do on a professional level. Yeah. You know, you you'll get a call back and you'll. And you'll be like, wow, I can do this. I can compete, right? But then you won't get it. And you're like, well, okay, well, what was it, right? As an actor, you go, well, what was it? What was it that the other guy had that I didn't have? Or what was it that was appealing for them that I didn't have? And I think, like, booking, because that, that year was the year where everything was happening, right? It was, like, <laughs> Remy, and then it was, like, I booked Craig of the Creek, and then it was, like, I booked Young Justice, all in that wow. year. Um, and it was, like, it just felt, like, divinely, like, oh, God was, like, hey, like, just wait. And you kind of wonder, like, yeah. what's on the other side of that? Yeah. And it felt like, like God was waiting for something to click. And it did at that moment. Yeah. Or it did in that year mm -hmm. um, where I was just like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, I can do this. Oh, I can compete with these people. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am, like, just as good. Or I do have what it takes. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just a lot of, like, in that period of not working where you're just like, I don't know. Like I don't know. Like there's maybe there's just something like my missing, or maybe there's yeah. some disconnect between my brain and my my body or my emotions. Maybe there's just something that I just don't have, and like mm. it, like that was just like a oh no, like you do, you you got it. Like you just have to, you just had to like go through this, and you had to like learn this, and you had to learn this aspect of your instrument and this aspect of your art, and you had to like take this perspective. You know, I used to go to CSD and like. And like I would do an audition, I walk and I hate it. I'd be like, oh my mm. god, you know, like have you seen that Tarantino movie with uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Mm -mm. There's a scene in that in that where Leonardo DiCaprio, because he's he plays an actor, yeah. he like looks in the mirror and he's like, I can't believe you ruined that scene in front of all those freaking people. I will freaking kill you. You know, he's like, I'm just <laughs> like, oh my god. I was like, this is That's such <laughs> what an actor like would do, right? Like, I can't believe you you suck, you stupid. You know, and like that's how I would talk to myself. You know, oh. that's how I would talk to myself. Yeah, and like not um, anymore though. Huh? Not anymore. Not anymore. Because you know of a lot of the people in my life I had a lot of like I had a lot of community and I had a lot of great teachers you know, like Charlie Adler was a, like an excellent teacher not just because of like because he's a good teacher but because just of the things that he says they stick with me you know the things that he says stay with you any any example yeah like um back during this period you know I took his class I was taking a, and and I was he was just like you know What's what? Because the first thing he asks everyone is like, "Oh, what's like going on? Like, what do you need, right?" Um, and the first thing I I was like, I I would told him I said, "Man, like, I feel like I keep auditioning and I keep getting close and I don't get it, and it's crushing. Mm. It's like soul crushing, mm. and like I don't know like like what to do. Like, and I go in and I read like I gotta get it. I gotta book the job. I gotta get it. I can't get dropped again. Like all this other stuff." Mm. And he's like, "Well." Only one person is going to get the job, you know, only one person, whatever. And you like doing your auditions with the desperation of needing to book the job. They will hear that mm -hmm. any fear you bring into the booth will come out in your read. And my mind, went, you know, I was like, wow, OK, you know, I never I never thought of it that way. You know, I just mm. thought if I tried hard enough, I tried as hard as I can, they'd see that. And they're like, he's like, yeah, but then you're not living in the reality of the character. You're not mm. living in the reality of the moment. Just stuff like that. Just like, mm -hmm. just like, I that that always like just kind of stuck with me. You know, he's just like, you know, only one person's going to get it, you know, um, regardless of what happens. Like only one person can get it. And like, you know, if you if you come into your read with that sort of desperation, that's what you're going to get. And like, you know, he like starts off like he's I, the last class I took, which was like during the pandemic, he started off the class with asking everyone what is the most damaging thing someone has ever said to you about your career because mm -hmm. he has the intention of undoing that damage mm -hmm. you know and mine was you know like oh like i remember you know and i think it was like a harmless thing you know but i remember i was talking to like one of my parents about like you know uh, i, I told my dad about like the, my, my roles and you know it was just the first thing that came to mind i didn't even think it was that bad i, I told him I was like oh it's not, not that bad i was like yeah he he was just my, he just asked like oh well you know i see you you always auditioning but why aren't you getting the job and he, i was like that doesn't seem like that's that bad right a lot of people were, were told these horrible things sure yeah and charlie i was like 
that's a bomb. What are you talking about? He was like, that, that's incredibly damaging to hear. You're not good enough is what, is what you're receiving, you know? And I was like, hmm, maybe that is what I heard, you know? And I was like, ow, <laughs> you know, like, dang, like, I, that was something that I, you know, he was like, that, he was like I know you. Can. And I had already been working with him for like years. He was, he was you know, I know your story. I know where you came from. I, I know that was probably really hurtful for, for you to hear from someone who like you wanted to support you, you know? Um, so yeah, like he completely changed how I like look mm. at like my looked at the work and looked at the art, just like all these stories he would tell. He would always break into a story with like about like you know the teachers he learned from and like all the experiences he had, and like he would always just really get to the heart of the not just the actor but their emotional. So I remember I brought friends to just I was like who were interested. I say, like, oh, you got to take you got to take his class, and. Like one of them, like was going through something personal. Was like, I mean, he, he could just tell because he's an actor, mm -hmm, he's an empath. Mm -hmm, you know, he was just like, "Hey, like, you you okay?" She's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Hey, just know that like it passes. You know, like it won't be forever." Mm -hmm. You know, and and then he tells you to pull up your pantyhose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> In the same breath, you know. Um, so he's he's great. Like, uh, and he completely changed how I looked at the work mm -hmm. and how I looked at acting, like mm -hmm. in in general, because I, I looked at it as this thing that was just like I don't know, like daunting, right? Like oh, I gotta. I gotta do this audition, I gotta book it, I gotta, because I can't, because I gotta do this, and like, I gotta pay this bill, and I gotta blah, 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 blah. And he, he started trying to, he, he, he was the beginning of me reframing that into like, it being something fun. And like, when I started walking out of like, like auditions, like, I like that. There's nothing more I could ask of myself mm. from what I did then. And so, you know, there was that. And then the next thing that, that really just changed, like, my career was booking Hawks and My Hero Academia. Mm -hmm. Then after that, yeah. had you read My Hero Academia before you auditioned? I hadn't. I hadn't read it before I auditioned. I watched. I think the first season before okay. I auditioned. You watched the sub. Yeah. Um, no. No. I watched it in dub. I watched it in dub. Okay. The first time, um, and it's funny because I was always, you know, I was always looking up manga that was out and seeing who licensed it, and based off of who licensed it, trying to determine if it would go to LA or if it would go to Texas, mm -hmm. right? So like my hero was one of those where I was like, this looks really cool. Yeah. I want to audition for this. And then I would look it up and it had been licensed by Funimation. And I was like, okay, so it's in Texas and I'll never get to work on this, uh -huh. right? It's in Texas, I'm never going to be in the show. And like at that, by the time I looked it up, it already was like deep into its dubbing season, right? Uh -huh. And I was like, no, I'm never going to be in my hero. Uh -huh. ah. And then like, what, a couple years later, <laughs> my hawks in the fourth season. Was that because of the pandemic? Well, Kellen was working on the show. Mm -hmm. he, he came on mm -hmm. in early uh, season one, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, what's funny about Kellen is his dad reached out to me when Kellen was 17 and he's like, Aww. my dad wants, uh, my son wants to break into voice acting. What do you think? And you know, you get emails like that every mm -hmm. single week. It's yeah. sometimes hard to respond to everyone, right. but it was a friend of a friend and I mm -hmm. listened to his demo and I was like, oh my God, he's so good. I took classes with Kellen. Yeah. Yeah. I was in, I think that was where I first heard him was, I, I think a Charlie Adler class, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, oh, this kid's good. You know, I was like, oh, he's the range. so yeah. good. Yeah. What? They make kids this talented. Uh -huh. You know, they make people this talented. It's like, oh my gosh, I have so much work to do, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So they had made the choice, I guess, to cast some Los Angeles actors or? Yeah. I think they were, they, they would come to LA, uh, you know, on occasion. Um, sometimes they were like running through all the talent they had in Texas, um, and so they would and or and or on occasion they would just like have a character and they would just open it up to to LA talent. Um, and I think that was what had happened in season four. She was like opening it up to LA talent, and like my agent Sam was working on like this is when CSD was like, okay, we we might want to like try the anime thing. And so my agent Sam, who was a junior agent at the time, was like working on on making that connection. And I also had a, my friend, I had a friend, Brittany Lauda, mm -hmm. over in Texas, who I worked with a couple times. She had did this indie game, and I was working with her on this indie game. Um, she had put my name in over at Funimation as well. Mm -hmm. So I had got this, uh, and, you know, so I got the audition for the She Has Psyche on that show. Um, which is like, the, you know, there were these like, uh, like this gang of villains um, in the fourth season. And like the guy I played had a, just a couple of cues. Yeah. But, you know, I worked with Colleen and Colleen was like, yeah. oh, I like working with you. Like, I want to work with you more because the guy just he just didn't have much to do. She's like, well, I've got this character coming up and, you know, I'm opening this up to L.A. actors. And, you know, if you want to audition, I'd love to have you audition. And I said, I'd love to audition. 
And it was this, you know, uh, you know, uh, I opened the audition. It was this guy Hawks, and so I'm like, looking him up, and you know, um, I'm like, oh, this character seems like a big deal. Like, and I, yeah. at that point, I had hadn't really played a character with like a in anime at least, like with a significant role, you know, like or a significant like role to play in the story. You know, there. Let alone my hero. My, yeah, uh, one of the biggest anime. You know, you <laughs> you start know? sweating. Yeah, because you know, because I, I was in it, I, and I was satisfied, right? I was like, you know, I was in my hero. I did my thing. I was in, you know, I, I never thought I'd be in it, and now I was in it as a villain, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Right. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then so I, you know, when Hawks came around, I was like, oh, psh, well, I'm not gonna book this. You know, they opened it up to LA people. All out of all the LA people, I'm competing against Matt Mercer and like Johnny Young Bosch and like mm-hmm. XYZ. Like, there's no way I'm gonna book this guy. Like, me, one, you know, like Zeno Robinson, who like people in LA don't even hire for anime. You know, <laughs> like, how, you know, it's just like, I was, you know, I was like, it was very daunting. And so like, I spent a very yeah. long time on that audition. I spent like maybe three hours, um, maybe four. Uh, wow. auditioning wow. For, like, just like this isn't good enough it's not good enough I've got to do it again uh-huh. i got to do it again and uh, that gets exhausting and yeah. you eventually get to a point where you're like okay just give it three takes and if, if they don't like these three takes it, you, you, yeah. you, you're just not the guy it, like it wasn't for you yeah. you know um, and so yeah I like deleted everything I had done because I didn't want to edit four hours of auditioning uh, and then the worst I, right <laughs> And then I just gave her three takes and I sent it in and um, I got a I got an email like upon the new year and and the title was Happy New Year Hawks and I said <gasps> yeah <laughs> it's like, no I know way. that feeling yeah it was like no freaking way um, and that had come like compiled with the Pokemon too like I had booked. Oh. Go and Pokemon like yeah like the same day, <laughs> the same day, <laughs> like the same day. Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah, wow, that was, was a good day. It was a good How day. How did you celebrate? Uh, it was during the pe- was it during the pandemic? No, 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 it wasn't. Um, it was like right. It was before the pandemic. I was at home. I flipped out. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know what Danced I did around the house. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I, maybe I got some ice cream. It's like when I found out I booked One Piece, I was just like, I, I, oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. maybe I ordered a pizza. Maybe I was like, you know, I deserve a, a pizza or some We're going or something. Big today. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your process like when you get audition sides? How do you approach um, an audition? I like read it over, um, and like I like I start I start off by like practicing the the the, the dialogue out loud. Try to get it to try to get a feel for the character. Try to get for like how they speak, how they talk, mm-hmm. um, their attitude. Then I got then you know after I kind of say it a couple times, I refer back to the to the um, the little the breakdown, the character breakdown, um, and just see if I've got their personality. If there's a like if there's a picture, is the most helpful thing. If there's like a character yeah. image, so like I can like imagine what like what they sound like with my voice, right? Imagine mm-hmm. what this character sounds like from me, coming from me. Um, and then I just like work the moments and I work the beats and I go, okay, like this is emotional. This is this. I've got to bring it here. And then, you know, yeah. And, and usually like I'll just, my the best, my best tool is like I just go in and I just do it until it feels good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like, I, I go in and I, I go in my booth. booth. Yeah. Booth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll, I'll record a first take a first pass just to do a first pass usually i throw away the first pass i learned that from tony oliver like always kind of just you just do a first pass and i usually just throw that away um and but then i like refine the moments like oh who's he who's he speaking to i think i want to do it a little more like i, I want to make them a little more broken hearted than this moment or i want to make them a little more scared or a little more happier or what if i said it like this you know this is a this is a funny beat and there's like a few ways i can attack this funny moment you know um i can like emphasize this word or i can like draw out this one you know um and so i just i just do it by trying to live in it as much yeah. as possible yeah 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 and what about physicalization do you physicalize certain actions do you find yeah do you stay connected always i'm trying to i try to be as as physical as possible mm-hmm. especially like the more bigger like more animated stuff the more zany stuff usually like the video game stuff they tend to want to be more cinematic um and so, and usually there's not like not a lot going on unless it's like a Naughty Dog project, and they want you to like yeah, do five seconds of sprinting, and then you punch a guy in the face, and then you know, you know, like you die while jumping off. A yeah, cliff on fire. <laughs> right. 
but I try to like physicalize as much as possible because I feel like it just adds to the weight of the moment. But a lot of and some some stuff is like just breath stuff. Like breath work is like really important. I think and in the work, you know, uh, the emotional yeah. stuff. It's all, you know, it's always and yeah. proximity too. Mm-hmm. I think is like oh yeah something that <clears throat> first time voice actors or you know even all, some of us you know proximity to the mic is so important depending yeah. upon the genre. Yeah. And, you know, promo trailer you kind of have a tendency to move in and use yeah base effect yeah i tend to like move in like on on like very intimate Mm -hmm. scenes like when like a character is like doubting themselves or really down on themselves and you know i try kind of try to move in because usually that stuff means they're they're just right there and they're talking to each other and like being like oh i just i've messed up today you know and i ruined everything and blah 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 right Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. yeah like I, i i try to get as as physical as possible. The more in my body and the more lived it is, I think the more like honest it is. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That's very cool. We were um, on a couple projects together. Mm-hmm. We just did the first slam dunk. Yeah. You, yeah, you're yeah. K- Kogore? Yeah. Uh, Kiminobu Kogure. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was pretty fun. That did, was cool. Um, he didn't make the premiere, sadly. Yeah. And I don't know what I was doing that night, but I know I. I, I think I was in at a con, like in another state. It was <laughs> so, really fun. Yeah. And then um, you were also in Neon White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were so, the you were one of the uh, the agents. You were. I was Neon Red. Neon Red. Yeah, yeah. you're Neon Red. Yeah. Love interest. Yeah. Yeah. Can we hear your voice? Yeah, For Raz. Uh, Raz is a cute little. Uh, he's a cat cute. angel. Yeah, uh, with a little beanie. And so I kind of gave him this like cool, you know. I, I mean, this. I, I thought the the scratch in his voice, like the rasp, is what would would tie it tie it together because he's like also a bartender. He's kind of cool. So I kind of gave him a little bit of a scratch kind of type deal. And he's kind of cool. He's got he's got the beanie and the the low eyes, you know. And he's just like, hey man, you know, just whenever you want to come by and get some good water and some good times with good friends. I'm all ears, you know, so, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, that was that was really, really cool. So now you've just like you piled on the number of roles, the number mm-hmm. of really iconic roles. And I see you. I mean, I run into you at the airport. You're yeah, coming back from this yeah, con, yeah. that con. Mm-hmm. You are on the move Thank and you. your fan base is, you know, <laughs> very passionate. Mm-hmm. And um, how are you managing your time these days? I'm not. I'm not. Uh, uh, usually, like, my days are all, I spend, you know, uh, I'm working during the day, mm-hmm. and then at night, um, I'm, like, relaxing, kind of, yeah. or I'm trying to, or I might be, like, auditioning, or um, usually, I'm, I'm, if I'm auditioning, like, at night, that means, like, I come home, and then I have to audition, and that's, like, another two hours of, like, work, maybe three, <laughs> you know, because I just, I, I take so long on auditions, and because I'm trying to, like, perfect them, yeah. and then I try to relax in some time in between that. Um, but yeah, not not really effectively. A lot of travel. Time. I mean, yeah. I know sometimes that that can be depleting mm-hmm. and exhausting. Being in one city one weekend and another city the next weekend. Yeah, and sometimes having to like come back from a con and immediately go to work. Yeah, <laughs> like I come back, I'll come back, and I'll be like, "Well, I got a session in like three hours. I gotta go." You know. But sometimes it can be rewarding. It's like what I, it's like what I ask for. Mm-hmm. But now it's like the challenge of like, how do I, how do I, how do I manage a good health a healthy work life balance like how do i establish that with myself yeah and you don't yeah. currently have a family uh, I mean, no no like no, like no children kids or no partner spouse or yeah, anything spouse. like that mm-hmm. yeah no so that that's good too. yeah <laughs> a little more time just for Zeno. just for me for me time <laughs> yeah. yeah and so like uh, a lot of times i'm trying to pursue like personal creative things mm-hmm. like that's what i'm trying to move into right now just like oh like like I'm trying to like make this, you know, I'm 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 developing a little show with my friends and I'm developing a manga project. Yes, yeah. Let's talk about that manga project. Yeah, that you want to talk really about my manga? Please. Oh my god. So um right now um I'm working on um and, you know luminescent illuminate <laughs> uh, <laughs> memento morty. Memento morty. Memento okay. morty. Um Luminous. and it's like um so right now I'm working on a one shot cuz I'm a creative and like I'm always having these ideas that always start off small and then spin off into something bigger than the, what they should be. So I'm uh-huh. trying to like keep continue to focus on condensing and making it something small and pal- palatable, something that I think can be completed. Yes. Um. So I can finish something and have something to show. But so right now it's called there's this there's it's called Memento Morty mm-hmm. and there is I'm right so there's this whole story of Memento Morty right Memento Morty has its own story. I'm currently working on like a prequel one shot of that story. Okay. Uh, just for something really small, really palatable, really uh, something that me and the artist that I'm working with can 
actually accomplish and achieve and, and put are out. Are you writer producer on this project? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm. Wow. Yeah. As much as I can, right? As much as like sure. one person can with like another guy who's got his own life and things he needs to do and like you know. Um, but. Uh, it's called Exordium. So it's like Memento Mori Exordium and Exordium's the the prequel story and it's like this it takes place on the backdrop of the afterlife. It's purgatory. Kinda like Neon White a little bit actually. Mm, it's cool. Pur- yeah, yeah. It's 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 purgatory. Um and uh in purgatory the like all, us like humans, like our sins accumulate there. Um like uh as because of <laughs> it's like this conv- convoluted story, right? But um, our sins accumulate in purgatory where angels are stationed to clean them up. Um, <laughs> and it's cool. like an endless sort of job. Uh, and that's because due to the influence of this one bad guy who created original sin within humanity. So when we die and we go to purgatory, uh, if, we, if we die, we die before our time, right? There's this concept of like dying before your time okay. in like uh, in like you know in like christian churches and stuff like that like i always heard about it growing up and so if you like die and you like aren't judged to go to heaven or hell you go to purgatory if you're stationed in purgatory as like this wandering lost soul you can like kind of sort of be taken over by your like uh earthly sinful impulses and Uh become a sin and so it's the angel's job to purify you and 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 you know stop you from wreaking havoc and overrunning the 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 afterlife which has real world um consequences um so exordium is essentially the story of how reincarnation began which yeah. begins in purgatory and wow cool, cool yeah cool. yeah um so it's it, it, the main characters are all these angels who all are kind of stationed there and then a human um one of the lost souls he develops what's called he develops a will um and he regains his sense of self and the angels are like, we have no idea what to do with this human being, <laughs> you know, with this mortal who has, you know, they've never seen anything like it before. Um, and he ends up wrapped up in this conflict between the angels and a betrayer who wants to find a way back to heaven. And so that's the story of Exordium. And it all leads up to the creation of reincarnation, which will then lead to the main story of so is the idea to publish this yeah 100 percent. yeah how how far off are you guys very (laughs) is it time to kickstart or um not yet i think right now i'm we're finalizing character designs because we've got like almost all the main characters all finally designed right as of like maybe a couple weeks ago um we've been working on this for like a couple years now and so all the character designs are are finalized um and um we're still, we're finishing up the design phase. I've already written about 30, so I'm testing it, I'm testing the pacing and stuff with my artist um, with this, with the first, like I wrote like 30 pages. And I said, okay, I've got 30 pages written, you know, let's see your pacing with this and it'll determine our pace and, you know, it'll determine like how I can project when things will come out and things like that or how fast you work. Mm-hmm. And it, it can determine how fast things come out, X, Y, Z, and how we want to release things. So once we're completely finished with the design phase, I'm going over the script right now and just cleaning it up. Um, you know, I'm going to give him like a month to do as much as he can. And then you'll print it. It'll be a physical. I won't print it yet. I want to print everything when it's finished. Okay. Um, I think the 30 pages is just like a first sort of chap, not chap, like a first like issue sort of type deal. Uh-huh. Um, and that I'll probably just put out online. Digitally. Digitally, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got it. For people to read. You know, maybe yeah. For the freezies, Become but if I make... fan. Yeah. Get into the story. Yeah. Line, get into the characters. Yeah. And then maybe... I can kickstart something. Do you right? have um, a character you want to play when you make it into a TV show? <laughs> not really, actually. Not with this one. I have like other ideas, and I was like, oh, maybe I could play this guy. But yeah. in this one specifically, I don't have a character like for me that I would play. Uh, maybe I'll like uh, <laughs> audition or something. Audition myself um, <laughs> if it ever becomes a thing. But it's also great to give yeah. other people the opportunity. But uh, yeah, I have so I'm like, oh, I want this actor to play this character. Yeah. I want this actor to play this guy. So that's fun too. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, so before we go, I'm just curious, because you said growing up you're a huge Dragon Ball Z mm-hmm. fan. What was it like then? Being yeah, in Dragon Ball. Dra- <laughs> a Dragon yeah. Ball property. Absolutely insane. Like, I mean, like, never, like, you know there's some things where you go, I don't know if you felt this way on One Piece, but you know there's just some things you go, I'll never be in that. And that's okay, mm-hmm. right? I was a fan, and I love being a fan, and it's cool. I don't mind not being in that thing, right? 
there's some things where you you don't even think about you don't even yeah. think about wanting to be in it because it's so much established already like it's established yeah. itself already where you're like yeah there's no room for me there you know mm. and i love it the way it is and so like that was dragon ball for me it, it hadn't even occurred to me that i could potentially be in it and in that capacity like in playing someone who's like integral to the lore and the canon of Dragon Ball, yeah. you know, like who, yeah, I, I, that had never occurred to me. So like, you know, I, I, I worked a lot and I think at some point you, you, you end up thinking that you will stop geeking out about things, but you kind of never do. And so even when I, when I booked it, I mean, even the way that I booked it was crazy. I was in New York. I was in New York just like on vacation, you know, like I was in New York visiting, uh, you know, someone and I was like staying at this Airbnb and I get a call. I can oh, listen no. to the, just listen to this, how listen to this sentence, the words of this sentence. I get a call from Chris Sabat. <laughs> you know, like that's a crazy sentence that I never thought I would utter in my entire life. I get a call from Chris Sabat and he's like, hey, I've got this thing that I'm working on because a lot of NDAs, I can't really tell you what it is. I can't really give you much of any details, but you know, I think you would be great for the role. I think you would be a great option for the role. He's kind of like this, this sort of fun character um, that I think you'd, you'd, you'd absolutely nail, you'd absolutely be perfect for. But the caveat is one, I can't really tell you anything at all yeah. about what it is and what I'm doing. And two, I need you to audition today. <laughs> and you're in New York. And in at New an York. Airbnb. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily, I had brought, like, my Here. little mic and stuff, sure. you know, um, just in case. And I was like, oh, 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 okay, yeah, sure, whatever you say. Like, I, 100%, I'll, I'm on it now. And I had a feeling it was Dragon. It was Because I knew the movie was coming out, it was coming up. And I know he's, like, heavily involved in that. Mm -hmm, so I was like, mm -hmm. I had a feeling it was Dragon Ball. Um, and, you know, so I sent in an audition and he like texts me and he says, oh yeah, this is great. Like, uh, I think, you know, we'll, we'll see. Like, I have a couple other guys I have auditioning, but like, it's like, they're, it's very quick, very limited. I have a limited pool, you know, so. And he was like, just tell me who, who you also think, like, you would work well with. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I would love to work with like these actors, you know, like, you know, and I was like, yeah, Alex is like my bro. So, uh, yeah, I think we would work really well together. And boom, like it. It ha and I when I, I got back to LA and I had kind of forgot about it and then I get a I get a text from you know Justin Cook who's over at Crunchyroll and he was like hey man if we wanted to blah 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 like what's the if we wanted to offer you something like what's the proper channels to do that and I was like oh like this is the proper channel blah 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 and I was like I think it's Dragon Ball you know I was just like it's like there's like a lot of just like you're sick you're spidey sense yeah <laughs> just like I, I'm putting two and two together and then my agent message he like he contacts me he's like hey i got this offer for dragon Ball. i'm like oh my god what wow. and it was i mean i'm even recording and just like having like sabot in the room you know and like like recording scenes alongside piccolo a how character. many sessions did you guys two it was two sessions because movies are fast like yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah movies are fast and like you know chris sabot's directing me and you know he's like yeah i'm an i'm an actor's director you know i'm 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 willing to stay here until we get it perfect and i love that i love like when directors are like we got to get it right you know so we really really just just dug in and just like did the work and i mean it was and on top of that it was like me freaking out like i'm watching this movie like that i'm looking forward to watching and it's about gohan right so he's like showing me he's like oh this is what happens at the end i'm like oh my gosh gohan gets this new form and oh and so i'm like freaking out as a fan you know and he's like man it's so cool that you're a fan you know usually we've done this stuff for so long we're just like all right it's like another blah 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 and like we bring in people who like kind of are whatever about it but like it's so cool that you're like kind of still a fan and you so freak out about it. it's like really gratifying because you know they're fans too you know like they're fans too and they i think it excites like especially someone like chris who like sort of established the show it's like exciting for him when other people are exciting and still like and still passionate about the show or right? just as passionate as he is about the show you know and about dragon ball and like you know and then i'm taught is like recording scenes alongside him with him directing me and like it's Piccolo, like it's a character who I've like grown up listening to, like in my ear that I'm actually interacting with. It's like absolutely crazy. It's it was such such an honor. Like it's yeah, it's, it's so insane. And I got to do the big the big like the big Dragon Ball yell at the end, and mm. you know 
yeah, uh, you know, Chris is trying to be very protective of my voice because he knows how these yells go, you know, and he's like, hey, like, you know, like, we, we don't have to do too many, just, you know. And, you know, I do one, you know, one take of the big, big scream. And he's like, you good? Like, I'm just I'm clenching over here. And I'm like, can I do one more? And he's like, what? Like, <laughs> are you sure? Like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, 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 I could do a better one. And he's like, oh, oh, okay, but just, you know, I just, just, you don't have to. And I was like, no, 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 I want to. He's like, all right. So I do, you know, this other, you know, the biggest yell I can muster in my, <laughs> like from the di the depths of my soul, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it's just because I've spent my whole life, yeah. like, listening to this, wow. you know. like a dream come true. And I was like, I want, and, and, you know, I used to, like, as a kid, like, like, on the playground at recess, I used to pretend like I was in Dragon Ball. Like I was already, I have a light, and like I was uh, with a, I think I did a con with Amanda Miller. We had this, we did this panel where we talked about like this stuff is like, people say, how do you, how do you prepare? And it's like some stuff you prepare, but some stuff, some stuff you had a lifetime of preparation. And like this was one of those things where it was like, I, this is what I, this is what I started, wanted to do anime for, because I wanted to do the big, the big yells and, and I've been listening to this forever for my whole life. I I know how this goes. I know how this should sound, you know. Yeah. And and it was like I got to put all of those years, like all twenty plus years of 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 being a fan into that one thing. And I think people, you know, I think that was very yeah. palpable. Wow. Yeah. You know, that's it was amazing. cool. It was so it was so great. Well, take that into your inspiration and take it into your heart, everybody. Yeah. Because dreams do come true. They do. They really, really like even the ones you don't think. <laughs> like even the ones you don't think are gonna happen. Like other are like are it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Just I, I always tell people when they go, Oh well, like how do I like get started or like how do i like what's advice that you would give someone who's like on their journey and it's just like just remember that you you love this if you keep if you keep focusing on who you are as an artist if you keep focusing on the 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 art and being better as an artist and that you love this stuff every it'll it'll pay off i promise i promise yeah and on that note, we're going to wrap it up. Thank yeah. you guys so much for watching Allison's Wonderland. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thanks, Zena. Thank you. Yay. Bye. 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 Bye.